Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about the Spanish Revival Mediterranean, and I have a lot to say about this before we get started, so buckle your seatbelts and just turn on move objects now to save yourself some time. Mediterraneans and anything with Spanish influence that you find here in the States are going to overlap a lot. So, if you're watching me build this and you're thinking it looks more like one style or another, first of all, feel free to let me know your concerns in the comments below. I've done my best to bring you only the most factual information I can find, but like I said, there is a lot of overlap. For example, uh, this build can look very similar to a Spanish colonial, uh, but that tends to be pretty much this, only, only one story. Um, there's also the Italian Mediterranean, which looks like this, only a little bit boxier and has square windows instead of arched ones. So there's a lot of overlap between a lot of these home styles, and I just wanted to be very upfront with that. With that being said, I have done my best to get this down to sort of a scalable model, just like the rest of the builds in this series, where I can explain how to put together sort of the base um, layout of a house like this, how to scale it and rearrange it to meet your sim's needs. And to try as I might, I just could not make this big friendly. We are going to be removing floors, we're going to be doing some funky stuff with fencing, we are going to be using platforms, um, we're going to be putting stairs on platforms, which is always an adventure. We have round walls in the works, and just with all of those moving pieces, if you're not super confident in your building yet, I would highly recommend that you watch this video because there's some cool stuff in here, and then check out some of the beginner-friendly tutorials first before you come back to this one. Just save yourself the headache. The Spanish Revival Mediterranean we are building today will be two stories. I have three bedrooms in here, as well as a couple of bonus rooms that could be potentially bedrooms uh, depending on your sim's needs. Plus, of course, I'll be going into how to expand the space. Typically, the Spanish Revival won't be more than two stories. You may have a half third story uh, where the third story is just significantly smaller than the story below it, but for the most part, you're going to see around two. There will be a lot of arched windows, um, sort of a stucco exterior, tiled roofs with a small eave overlap, which is always nice. I tend to prefer that anyway. We'll also be using a lot of arches, columns, and really the best way to show you what really makes this build unique, special, and awesome is to just jump into the game. I'm going to start building on a 20 by 30 lot in Oasis Springs today, and this will be a base game only build. Uh, we'll be building right next to these sort of more, I'm going to call this a generic Mediterranean. Um, we will be using some of these same elements, and some of them we will not be using, and I'll explain that as we go. This is going to be a long one though, so let's just get building. Starting from left to right, I'm going to start a few tiles back and do a 6 by 6 square. I'm going to have this be the master bedroom and put a 3x4 master bath off the back, as well as this little bonus room. Uh, basically, I just needed a room to fill in that space during my practice build, so that could be a bathroom, office, walk-in closet, whatever. Starting here, we're going to go down 6 and over 7. This will be our entry, although we're going to start in 1 and 3 in here, and do a 5x8. This will be our living space, and we're going to do a 5x11 rectangle here, this will be divided up into a kitchen, bathroom, and dining area. Upstairs, go ahead and just cover this whole area right here. Then I'm going to start one tile in again to place this room and place a wall four tiles in on this side. This will become bedrooms. This could be another bedroom, home, gym, perhaps a studio. Um, and this space we're actually going to open up in a little bit to sort of uh, have a two-story entry hall. I'm also going to add a little sort of front entry, um, almost a courtyard within a courtyard right here. We'll have some arches and then door. And now we are ready to add our rounded rooms. Uh, this is the thing that really made me decide that there's no way I can make this into a beginner friendly build um, if I want to add these rounded walls. They're just a pain to work with and I highly recommend building just with normal walls for a while before you try to work with these. Super happy that they added them to the game, uh, but not always easy to work with. Now one thing you definitely want to do is make sure that you place a third story here. What this is allowing us to do is actually have a round floor right here, otherwise the top of the floor if you try to add like floor tile or roof or anything can get pretty funky looking. So we're going to remove the ceiling, remove all of our walls, and this will technically leave us with a semicircle floor. All that's going to do is keep that nice and smooth. I am moving a little faster today just because this is not a beginner friendly build, so I expect that you have some of sort of the base knowledge down already. Um, however, if you don't like this faster pace and you want me to slow down again, just let me know in the comments. I'm going to add a courtyard in the front here. I'm going to use half walls to just sort of dictate the space, although we can replace that with fence later if we want. And here's 
one issue that we're going to run into. If I want to actually connect these half walls and make this a room, it's going to delete my rounded room. And if I try to put it back, it's going to add these sort of diagonal partial octagon walls on the outside, and I don't want that. So instead, I am actually going to use terrain paint for this courtyard, which works out really well because, and I'll be using the like least soft version here, this works out just fine because these typically are sitting on the ground, possibly will have a slight elevation, but for the most part are just ground level builds. So the terrain paint is going to work just fine. I am going to elevate this one and add a small platform inside here. And we have a few more walls to add inside. Lining up with this circle, we're going to sort of finish it as an octagon inside. Add a couple of walls here. This will be a dining room kitchen and a small bathroom here and for now i'm just going to leave these walls eventually we're going to open this up but curved walls once you remove these walls here the room sort of just has to stay there and if you try to do too much with it it's just going to disappear which is really frustrating so we're going to leave those walls for now but this is basically our floor plan i will add another sort of courtyard out here i'm going to go out about six tiles and then just carry it over this way i'll add a pool over here nice big one I think. Adding a balcony to the second level is a great way to add some more detail and interest and there are a couple of ways to do it. You could either add a flat square just like this, add some fence, maybe a roof over top, or you can add a whole nother room and add arches around like this one. And that'll give it sort of a partially closed off feel. Next up I want to tackle having sort of a two-story entry area here. I'm going to start by removing this floor. And it's going to be important to remove the ceiling from the room below as well. Now of course we can see into the rooms below us, but guess what? We need a place to walk anyway, so we're actually going to do a one tile wide sort of walking path all around here. Since I have this balcony right here, I'm just going to go ahead and copy that, bring it down to one tile wide, and extend it the whole way. I'll do that on both sides, and then draw my walls back because of course the walls don't stay, how convenient would that be? I want another set of one tile wide rooms, so I'm going to make one over here, or rather flat pieces of floor, and then I have to pick it up again. There it is. And I won't copy it again, I'll just move this one over here. And this time the wall stayed. I'm not really sure what the rules are for that, but now we have sort of, I turn the grid off, you can almost see it better. We have a walkway all the way around. For a larger build, you could easily make this two tiles. And actually, while I'm on that note, let's talk about scalability. Looking at the first floor, if we wanted to make this bigger, first of all, we'd probably need a larger lot. This is about as big as you're gonna get on 20 by 30. But if you had a lot that was say 30 by 40, you could extend this um, entry hall side to side or even depth wise. Add some skill items in here, possibly a piano, indoor greenhouse, something like that could be really lovely in here. Uh, you could have a whole master wing, you could have a hall with multiple bedrooms coming off this way. And you could of course expand the kitchen, add a dining area in the kitchen as well as a formal dining room, have multiple living spaces, have more bedrooms down here. Upstairs, you can always extend the second story to meet up with the story below it. You could just continue tacking on rooms and hallways all around. You won't go more than two stories. Having the rounded towers is optional, but with the Mediterranean being such a... Just the Mediterraneans all have so many aspects that overlap. I found that these round towers were relatively unique to the Spanish style, so I wanted to make sure I brought that in. Vaulted ceilings is an important thing, and we're going to tackle that next. I'm going to select these rooms here and remove the ceilings so that our entryway will actually see straight up to the rafters, which we will add. I'm also going to vault the ceiling in the dining room by removing this ceiling here, and in the living area by removing this ceiling here. You could of course do this to any area of the build, um, I'm not going to do it on the round parts just because I feel like that's asking for trouble. We have a deck here so that won't work and I just don't feel like doing the other ones. Now to make this look intentional what you're going to do is grab your smooth keeper in whatever wood tone you're using. I'm going to stick with default tones here today just because I am lazy. And you're going to bring your beams across in the opposite direction of the peak of your roof. So the peak of this, oops, the peak of this roof is going to be going this way. So I'll be placing my rafters as they were this way. Now with this one, I'm going to be placing a half gable sloping down in this direction. So since technically the peak would be along this wall, I'll be placing these rafters in this direction. 
You could place these one or two tiles apart. Because I prefer realism and wanting to make sure that my lights look like they're hanging from something, I would probably place them every tile so that I can make sure that I have lights um, like actually hanging from them. Here, I'll show you. Shift page down to adjust the grid and therefore which level your lights want to place. And see, this way I can sort of place my lights and make them look like they're actually attached to something, as opposed to just sort of floating out in the open. This doesn't matter so much for gameplay, but it's a nice little detail, and if you're taking screenshots or anything, it will definitely show up. Another thing you can do to these rafters to help them feel a little bit more, um, uh, beefy, is you can grab this inlaid exterior trim and try to match the color. You can actually place that along the fences as well. I think this looks better than that little bit of drywall that's just sort of hanging off the bottom. Of course, up here we'll do the same thing. The peak of this roof will be traveling this way, so I'll be placing my rafters in this direction. You can use the jutting exterior trim as well. I'll go ahead and uh, show you what that looks like. Um, that's just going to give you some really, really thick rafters, which is fine. This could suit um, the style that you're going for just fine. But if I were to use that one, I'd probably space my uh, fences out a little bit more. I think we're in a good spot to start adding roof pieces now, so let's talk about roofing. The Spanish Mediterranean has a mix of both closed face and open face uh, roof pieces, which I think is interesting, and it's one of the Mediterranean styles that tends to have a small overhanging eave. By contrast, you can see this more generic Mediterranean next to us does not have any eaves. Um, that is more typical of the Italian style, which we'll be going into later. You do want to pitch your Mediterranean roof down. If you just sort of start with a default pitch, you can see it sort of has that ghost outline, and you want to put it somewhere between half and two thirds of the way. I'm going to go with that because my build is a little bit taller. I can pull off a bit higher at my peak on my roof. And that is actually the only place I'll be using a hip droop, so it can just stay there. Next, I'm going to grab a gabled roof to place here. Again, there's a mix of open and closed face. Go with whatever works for you, or if you have a reference image or whatever, just make sure that you're lining everything up. Over here, I'm going to grab a half hipped roof. Oh, and if I didn't mention it already, I do have move objects just turned on by default for this build. And if you notice you're having some issues placing anything, I would recommend turning that on. I am actually going to also place a half gable on this tiny little piece of roof sticking out back here. I'm going to grab a half gable to place on this bit of roof, which would actually be a great opportunity for a skylight as well. Skylights aren't technically like part of this style, but now that I've mentioned it, I really want one. Screw it, let's add a skylight. Again, this is not necessarily important to this style, but it's a great opportunity and I'm never going to pass up an opportunity to have a great skylight. I'm going to remove that piece of fence right there, copy the same roof piece, make sure my eaves are both in and just bring it to width. I'm going to bring this eave in as well and add a glass texture. We'll add something kind of fancy, why not? Copy this roof one last time, bring it down to one tile deep and pull it over. The glass is clipping through a bit, all I have to do to fix that is hold alt and pitch down ever so slightly. And there we go, a skylight. Yep, don't regret that at all. The last thing we have to do is this little bit of round roof here. I'm actually going to start by copying this gable because I wanna make sure it's the same pitch as this roof, which you already know this one is. After I have this lined up with the middle of my circle, which I will have to push this eave back for, I'm going to go ahead and grab a circular roof. If you want to know more about roofing on round walls, I highly recommend you check out this video, um, which I posted back in July when the round wall update came out. Kind of blew up, one of the biggest videos on my channel now. Uh, so if you haven't seen it already, I highly recommend you check it out. I think that's actually all of our roof pieces, which is fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and use this Mediterranean Magic Tile roof. They're sort of the shingle clay roof and the um, rounded shingle clay roof. Rippled clay tile, as this uh, description would say, and this is typically what you're going to see more on the Spanish style Mediterranean builds. When I'm placing trim on my Mediterranean roofs, I like to use the beveled out roof trim and grab either a wood, if I'm going to be using a lot of wooden elements, or sort of a clay colored trim. I think it's kind of a bummer that we don't actually have like a tile trim. I think that'd look really cool, you know, to actually have like the exposed edge of the tile, uh, but obviously that's asking for too much. A lot of Mediterraneans share a lot of features. For example, they pretty much all have some sort of tile roof. It's going to be a low pitch with a collection of both closed and open faces. You'll have small to no eaves on most of them. They'll probably be stucco. Most of them will be one and a half to two stories. 
um, just lots of overlap. So to sort of focus on what really sets the Spanish one apart, um, that's kind of what I'm trying to do with this one. That's why I have the rounded tower on this one specifically, uh, the vaulted ceilings with the beams across them in this one specifically. If you're interested in more Mediterranean or Spanish inspired builds, I do have a handful of them coming up later in this month, so subscribe if you haven't already. All right, if you haven't already, please turn on move objects and bring your attention to the windows section. We're doing windows and doors pretty much simultaneously. I'm just going to start on the left and work my way around. If you haven't already noticed, uh, we are building with medium wall height on the bottom and short on the top. I forgot to mention that, uh, but that's pretty standard for this architectural style. So if you didn't already, uh, go ahead and switch this up from short to medium. Shouldn't mess anything up that you've placed so far, so no worries if you missed that. And I apologize uh, for not mentioning that sooner. Alright, let's grab some windows. Now, one thing that sets the Spanish apart from the Italian Mediterranean influence is that Spanish tends to have more rounded windows, like this one. And the Italian tends to have more rectangular windows, like these. However, they're both in hot climates, so you're going to see a few large windows, but for most of the spaces that aren't just like big open communal spaces, you're going to see a lot of smaller windows. This one's going to be a bedroom. I don't want too much heat and light getting in there, so I'm going to grab some of these smaller windows, but still make it nice and grand because it is the front um, of the build still. Something just like this I think is fine and dandy. And I will match that a bit on the top as well, as that is also a bedroom. Moving over here to our entry, I'm going to grab these mission style arches and place those around. Again, we sort of have like a mini elevated courtyard here. I'm going to grab the mega double door to actually be the entry point to the house and I'll place that sort of in the middle here. But I don't want it to look too lopsided, so I'm going to also grab this window to place here. Just gonna grab a nice little door to open out onto this porch here and grab a couple of small windows to let some light in here. I think I'll go with this one. I'm going to use these windows on our round area here. You do need move objects on to be able to place these windows. They don't technically fit. I think they kind of look better than some of the windows that are actually coded for these uh, slots. So this is a dining room. So I'm going to go ahead and say we can get away with some slightly larger windows here. I'll place one there, there, and on this side as well. Do you want it to actually be opposite? Okay. This is the bathroom. If you want to add windows to your bathroom, just go ahead and grab something pretty small. Um, this would work great, or even this if you want to be fancy. In the kitchen, I will be using the rectangular windows just because that will give us a little bit more space for counters and cabinets and all that jazz. And then back to the living space, I'll be adding a slightly larger window yet again. Of course, we also have the skylight. So I'll want to line some windows up with that. And I'm going to add doors onto the courtyard off both the living space and the entry space. I think I'll use a sliding door. I'm just going to try to match the wood tone. That's a little light and that's a little dark. Well, we'll pretend this one works. I don't know what this room is going to be, so I'm just going to throw down a random window. And this is a bathroom, but it's fairly spacious, so we don't have to worry too much about plumbing. This side, honestly, I'm just going to leave windowless. Um, I'm going to try to line up similar windows upstairs realize I never actually split this out. Let's do two bedrooms like this and then a nice Jack and Jill bath for them, I think. The windows up here won't be quite as nice. However, that's just sort of something you're going to run into if you're trying to make a house look realistic. Uh, the back windows don't always look as good, but that's okay. We're still getting some light in there. I'm going to place a couple more windows above that door there and in this room, which will be a gym or something. Inside, I basically just want to grab some nice wooden doors that are going to match the wood tones we have elsewhere. As you've already been able to tell, we're pretty much using a lot of dark tones, which I find quite lovely. In Jack and Jill bathrooms, I like having the doors directly opposite one another. Just that makes it a lot easier to just like put a bathtub over here and then whatever else you need over there. I'm debating if it's worth it putting this on a diagonal. This doesn't appear to have messed anything up. Just added one of these flat triangles right here so that we still have space to walk through. Because this is a common room, I'm going to add these windowed doors. This will let a little bit more light in. Uh, plus, I just think it's nice to use windowed doors or arches between living spaces. We're going to delete these walls like literally last thing. So don't worry, I haven't forgotten about it. I just don't want to tempt fate. All right, for stairs, go ahead and grab a platform. 
and you're going to raise it up seven, so it'll be a total of eight. Um, I don't know how this is counted, so let's just call it it's going to be eight tall, eight units. Now you should be able to grab a nice open stairway and place it here, and that will line up just fine with this. And then below that, you can place a more closed off stairway. The wood tones match pretty well. Um, you can then paint this and it gives a little bit of division here, almost like a hallway, but not quite. This little area down here, you could add plants, you could add a fountain, you could add a kid's activity table, you could add a litter box and pet food bowl. Lots of options for understair space. I don't know, it's just like a fun little architectural element that you can grab. And since this is not a beginner friendly build, I felt comfortable messing around with that a bit, and now you can too. Placing stairs on platforms can be really tricky, so if this just isn't working for you, just place an L-shaped stair right there. Now for going between rooms inside, we are going to be using a lot of arches, like this. Another option would be to grab a couple of columns. Any round column will work just fine. I'm going to be using the mega columns today. To open this space up, we could grab some of these spandrels. Now, I personally think that this one is actually the best one for in the base game uh, for this, just because it's among the most plain. If you have literally any other pack besides the base game, you're probably going to have a better option. Cats and dogs, it kind of can give that more solid wood beam look, which is actually what you'd be looking for. Um, even Country Living it has less decorative elements, which is great. Seasons, my favorite spandrel of all time. Even Snowy Escape has that like thick beam on top. Island Living, maybe not so much. Um, get together, also a little bit less decorative. But this is a base game only build today, so I'll be going with this one. Um, don't know why that deleted my column. There we go. And that's just cool, isn't it? It is clipping out a little bit on the outside here, which I'm not a huge fan of. So if you don't want to deal with that, just grabbing some arches or removing walls altogether will work just fine. You could even leave it completely open. Now let's talk floor plan real quick. In a Spanish Mediterranean style, you're going to find a combination of both more segmented layouts like this one and more open floor plans. It kind of seems to come down to architect as well as when the build was actually created slash built, but this seems to be a very, very widely adapted style, which on the plus side means you can make pretty much anything work. On the less plus side, if you're a super nerd like me, it makes it really difficult to find out if you need a more open or closed off floor plan, or if you have wooden stairs or tiled stairs. Um, I found lots of examples of both. So if you're a nerd, you understand what I'm saying. If you're lost, don't worry. We're about to move on to a little bit more uh, practical information, which is you can add little arches to get into your kitchen and dining room, which I think is just super cute. This will help it feel a little bit more open uh, while still keeping those rooms as separate rooms, which just makes it easier to paint, light, all that stuff. I suppose you'd like to access the bathroom, so I'll place a door there as well. And in here. And I think that finishes up all of the doors and windows. The last structural elements we have to discuss for inside are railings and fences. I highly recommend finding something that has both a fence and a railing that match, and wrought iron was actually used a lot specifically in the Spanish style Mediterranean. I think stair railing is the best option I found in the base game for what I'm going for. And honestly, we need more wrought iron options, because most of these are wood and glass, which is fine, that's very handy, but this is just a little too industrial, and I'd really like something a little more ornate. Maybe some other packs have stuff, I don't have all the packs, um, I have all these. So maybe I'm missing out on some good fences. If I am, let me know, because there are definitely days where I get really frustrated at my fence options and I would literally buy a pack uh, for fences. Don't tell my husband. This is definitely more of an exterior sort of fence. You can tell because it lights up, but it's the best option I have for style, so that's what I'm going with today. I'm also going to add a little fence there, you know, for safety reasons. And upstairs, listen up, because this is important. Do not just fence in this whole open area. If you do, it's going to mess up everything we worked so hard to achieve. You want to only fence in where you absolutely need to, and do not put a fence here. If you put a fence here, you will not see it because the stairs automatically cut it out, but it's going to dictate this is an outside space. It's going to mess up the lighting. It's going to let the roof clip in. Um, it's going to possibly add the floor back and make it almost impossible to take back out again. So do not do that. The fact that this lights up is genuinely bothering me, but I just, unless I switch to a wood option, which I guess would be fine, but I don't want to, um, like, look at that. There's no way that's keeping people safe. So you know what? The lit up fence it's going to be. I'm getting a little too worked up about this. I apologize. <laughs> um, let's just delete these walls real quick. I like to use the wall tool and just hold control um, to remove my 
balls. I don't know why this roof is clipping in specifically. Would you clip in if I drag you out? You would. Okay. I thought I had this solved uh, when I was test building, but apparently I was wrong. So I might just add arches. Okay, I can get away with just adding arches and then removing this piece of wall. Okay, that's fine. I need to calm down. But like I keep saying, this is build like a nerd. I'm gonna get fired up about the weirdest stuff. I'm gonna give you so many useless details that you never needed to know. Oh, see, like this would be great if it came as the railing option, but it does not. Um, anyway. You clicked on the video, you signed up for this. I think I typically have been doing siding before I do windows on these videos, but I forgot. So let's talk about that now. We're going to be going with stucco. Um, stucco on you is a good option. Plaster make perfect is a good one. Um, unbent smoothness can also work really well. You're going to want to go with something between white and cream for most Spanish Mediterraneans. I think I'm going to go with this nice white stucco on you. If you followed along with the skylight, make sure that you hit up the skylight um, walls as well there. And honestly, you can even just bring this to the inside. Of course, you can add colors or whatever the heck you want. It's The Sims 4. There are no rules. You can make this whole thing hot pink and neon green if you wanted to. But if you're looking for authenticity, I recommend sticking with a very light colored stucco plaster sort of look. I'm going to be adding a bit of a trim down here. I'm just going to grab uh, this platform trim. Should match with the walls fairly decently. For flooring, you're mostly going to see a lot of tiles. I like to just use these plain old rectangle or uh, square ones, especially on the first floor. And then upstairs, you may still see tile or you might see some wood as well. My kid is fake sneezing and I'm not really sure why. I'm gonna put these tiles out on the back as well and in the pool. If you didn't already know, if you just page down all the way to the basement level, you can get a much more clear shot at the pool to change up the tiles, to change up the walls. My walls don't seem to want to paint right now, which means I probably am going to have to restart my game. There we go. I was just trying to find some tiles that sort of matched. That'll work. If you're going to add a fireplace, which I mean, it's typically a warmer climate, so you may or may not want one. You're going to want to place it more toward the center of the build, and your chimneys are going to be a little more on the ornate side. Don't worry, we have two options that will work great here in the base game. You can add just something a little more simple like this, or a tad more ornate, such as the mega chimney. Delightful. Now let's see what we can do about this kitchen. I'm going to be using wooden cabinets today, if your budget allows for it. If I just put a small L-shaped kitchen on this side, I would have plenty of space for a small kitchen table over here. Or I can go for more of a U-shaped kitchen and add some nice cabinets along this wall, which could look quite good as well. Bathrooms are nothing special, just do what works for you. Alright, I do apologize for being a little all over the place today. It's been a busy day and I've had a touch too much caffeine. Um, but I'm having a good time, hopefully you are too. And before we finish, did I miss a wall? Before we finish up and discuss landscaping, I of course have to do my little spiel here. If you are enjoying this video and you haven't already, please, please hit the subscribe button and the like button. It helps me out a ton. It lets me know that you appreciate this video, that you like what I'm doing here, that the information is helpful, it's presented in a meaningful way, just all of the good things. If you don't like it and you know specifically why, if I'm talking too fast, if I use stupid words, if it's the wrong color, um, you can let me know in the comments. That's also really helpful. I know I do make mistakes. I just don't always know what they are until you guys let me know or I come across an article months later. I am doing my best to bring the best information to you guys as well as as scalable and simple builds as I can while also hitting all of the sort of hallmarks of each style. And if you want to see the articles that I've been reading, check out my reference images, see some of the floor plans that I have pinned. Those are all in an in a Pinterest board, which is in the video description down below. And now we can talk landscaping. I do quickly want to touch on the topic of fences, as promised. I would recommend having this stay some sort of low wall, but if you want to add gates or anything, having a fence is the best way to do that. The mega fence is a bit shorter than the half wall we have here, but it does have some decent swatches that can match up with your build fairly well. And if you want a little more privacy, the rustic stone wall or the Spanish Revival can do just fine as well. I think I'm going to use the Spanish Revival specifically on the front of my build because I like those tall columns and the little bit of extra privacy it provides. For landscaping, as usual, I'm going to sort of look to the world around me for some inspiration. Looks like we have a lot of rocks. Um, these plants 
which are technically in debug, uh, so we will not be using those today. We'll do debug landscaping in a separate video if you want, uh, but some of these plans are available, so let's see what we can do. If you have a specific shape for landscaping in mind, it can be really helpful to actually paint it in first. Like, I would like for my landscaping to come out in front of the build here and surround a front path and have a little bit over here as well. In taking cues from the world around me, we have lots of large rocks, so let's start there. Pick a nice desert color and scale up using the bracket keys. Rocks can get expensive fast. If you want to use a lot of rocks but want to stay cheap about it, I recommend checking out the debug menu. I have videos about that on TikTok, and if you're interested, I can make some here for YouTube as well after October. Now that we have some rocks, we can add in some other plants as well. I'm going to add a couple of palms. Um, I think I'll place these out a little bit, actually. Now, placing trees in odd numbers is really nice, and if you have a couple of trees of two different sizes, like this, you can grab the smaller one and scale it up one for a third size, or you can take the larger one and scale it down one. Either way, you get three sizes of tree, and I just think that makes a nice little cluster. And I think that gives a little bit of sort of shade and privacy to this side of the house, which again, these are bedrooms, so that makes sense. You can use the same technique for anything in the backyard you may want to do. Grabbing more palms, boulder looking rocks, and this tree over here is this tree, the mesquite tree, which is a bit of a smaller tree but can add some nice privacy. In the bush section you'll find cactuses as well as a couple of more succulent style plants, uh, the oso succulent, as well as the agave plant. I think we'll use these next. The agave plant is super common in more uh, modern landscaping as well, which I do have a video on. I can link that here. For desert flowers, I like to use some of these molten volcano flowers. Um, they're just very bright and colorful, which is nice. The shaggy lissus is also one of my favorites. I don't know why, I just particularly like using these in the desert. I can't even see them in the world around here. I just think they're nice. We don't have the exact wildflowers, um, but we do have these, which could work well. Put some of these back here. And I just want a little color up front, so I'm going to grab some of these in yellow. I'm going to grab my same desert pavers and bring the edge up a little bit toward the uh, less soft side. I think this is just called softness, so. After painting that path in, I can adjust my plants, and then I'm going to grab my terrain paint one last time to add paint around my fences, the edge of my build, all of my landscaping, which includes trees, wildflowers, and rocks helps things feel a little more established and also sort of acts like an outline, um, giving the build a little more definition. This build style is a great reason to use some of these iron balconies. I think this is the best place I have to use them in this build because I low-key forgot about it. Um, but that wrought iron look will really come in handy for this specific build style. Semicircle one can work as well, uh, probably on a smaller window like this one. Made in the shade tile awning. Again, this is a great opportunity to use this item, such as over this back door here. If you want to show off how rich you are, a great way to do that in the desert is to add a fountain, which could go great in this front courtyard area. Before you guys go, let's just do a quick recap of the style and highlight some of those Spanish influences that you want to make sure you have in your Mediterranean builds, if of course that's what you're going for, which I assume you are since you watched this whole video. Uh, thanks, by the way. I do appreciate... Um, you guys actually enjoying the series because I am loving putting this together if you can't tell. If we're talking about just the generic footprint of the build, you're going to have some sort of front entry courtyard. It could be as small as just this little area here or as large as this. If you're using any sort of curved walls, which again I found more typically used in the Spanish style Mediterraneans as opposed to the more Italian um, or many other influences. Hello small child. If you're using curved walls, I highly recommend sticking with the terrain paint. Um, it's just going to make your life so much easier. Inside you could have a more sectioned off living space like this that all sort of flows into one large central hallway, or you could have it more open. Either way works just fine. It seems to depend, based on my research, um, largely on exactly where the builds are constructed and exactly when, and who the architect is and all that stuff. To help make the whole space feel more cohesive, make sure you're sticking with similar wood tones throughout, which I kind of failed on the arches, forgot to change those swatches, oops. Um, and using tile floor on the first level is pretty standard, although you can use some wood flooring, um, especially on the second level. Having a double story entry and really vaulted ceilings anywhere, which you can see if I put the walls down with these cross beams here, um, this is really going to add a lot of great detail to your build, a lot of interest, um, it's just fun. 
frankly. Second story balconies are not necessarily required, but they are quite common, so adding one or two of those not only adds visual interest, but can add a little bit more accuracy to the style as well. When you're landscaping, look to the world around you. Here we can see we have very similar setup. We have some plants, we have rocks, we have some of these palm trees, a little bit of privacy coming from this mesquite tree. And up front, we have a little bit more structured landscaping, but still fairly open, uh, not too water heavy. You don't have to water these plants a ton, uh, and you really don't have to water the rocks at all, which is super cool. Very um, eco-friendly of them. Outside, you're going to go with a white to cream stucco or plaster or adobe siding, um, and of course, a tiled roof. This doesn't have to be red. It's most commonly red, um, but we have some other fun color options here too. If you've made it this far, first of all, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate knowing that you guys are enjoying this series, and if you think this was fun, you are going to love the other videos I've put out on this series so far. Check out the top card, which is a playlist of all the Build Like a Nerd videos, and check out this bottom card for a video playlist all about roofing. Uh, I did a whole series about roofing, like I'm doing this month, just all different build styles. I did a whole month about roofing only. So if you want to get better at roofing in general, I highly recommend checking out that playlist as well. I am out of time. I'm sure you guys are ready to move on to your next project. So thank you so much for building with me today, and I look forward to building with you again tomorrow. Bye!